nice to be back. I'm in perfect health right now. Last week I couldn't be here in person, but I did uh, attempt to do a, a virtual class and then my throat failed like 10 minutes in. I literally gave up if some of you were there. And I said to myself, you know what? This is not going to happen. So I, I found a great video that I covered really recently, like a month, uh, maybe three months ago with the other section. And I uploaded that one. So I hope that uh, did its due diligence. I did watch it myself to make sure it covered everything that we're supposed to. And it did. So I'm glad that, um, um, you know, that was the case. And I hope you guys um, watch the video. If you haven't, please watch it. I'll show it to you right now what it's about. Now, I'm not going to leave you hanging like that. I'm going to cover some of the stuff anyways to make sure if you have any questions or I'm going to have to, um, you know, basically go through all the details. But I don't want to waste another lesson on the same thing. So watch the video, please. And I'm going to get on to the most important topic at hand, which is building the actual website in Photoshop. And that's today's lesson. Very important. OK, so let's get started. And I'm going to switch my camera over now to the um, to my projector. And here we go. Right. Uh, and Samira, can you let me know if you can see my screen, please? Just give me a quick hands up. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate that. And the rest of you can see my screen OK. My projector is working great. So this is the video that I uploaded last week um, that I was going to you know, talk about anyways. A lot of you were probably here or maybe working your way back. The YouTube channel uh, is quite building up quite nicely. So if you go to the bottom, this is class number 10. This is the one that we did last week. If you didn't watch it, please watch that video. Very important. Like I said, I'll go over some of the things today just to quickly uh, wrap it up. And then we'll get into class 11 because this is class 11, right? So I want to make sure we're all on schedule. We're doing really well. We're not behind at all in any, you know, any means. Just want to make sure we're on point. So watch this video. OK, and it's pretty much uh, this one over here. So if you watch the video, it's a really good uh, um, put together for that particular right class. That's when to get rid of the one. And I'm going to, like I said, I'll go over this folder with you. But in a nutshell, it covers all the advanced selection techniques. OK, so we'll kind of go over the material with you right now quickly. OK, so class number 10. So once I do that, I'll get into the class number 11. I'll start that one. All right. Okie dokie. So once you watch the video and what I'm going to do now, it'll all make sense in case you're like, you know, lost with the, what files are we dealing with here? So it's all here under uh, the Photoshop module. You go under class number 10, um, 11. OK. Uh, these two classes are kind of amalgamated in one. Like this is class 11, let's say. But class 10 was last week, so it covers a lot of the material that's already here. So the web page image, image sources, we'll deal with that today. OK, uh, generating image assets today. Uh, web template today. OK. The mock-up and the desktop mobile, we'll just look at those files today. But the one that covers last week's video is this folder here called layers.zip. So layers.zip is a fundamental tutorial um, file assets folder that's used for these tutorials that we're doing here. So I want you to, uh, let me just quickly download it to show you what it is. You don't have to do anything because it's on that video, but if you want to download it, go ahead. I'll save it onto my desktop. Is that that video that I that I pointed to, you know, for last week? When you watch it, and you want to follow it and learn along with me, this is the folder that you need. So once you extract this folder, everything is there. All right. So I'm going to go over some of the stuff that's there right now, and then I'll I'm not going to replay my own video and stuff. I'll let you watch it, and we'll move forward. So what that pertains is. Um, a bunch of folders and these folders are essential to kind of teach you more advanced use of layers. Now, I remember before we left last week, we, we did an ad in Photoshop for your Facebook assignment and that was well done. So if you look at that um, folder here, that in a nutshell covered the important stuff as well. So it kind of paved the way for what's ha happening now. Uh, let me just quickly go here to week number nine. Yeah, so basically we, we put an ad together from scratch using image sources, 
right? We did some other techniques and stuff. So this is important and this is a good way to segue forward. So let's look at this folder now. There's a homework folder. This is just for you to practice using layers in Photoshop. So if you open this file up, what it does basically is just helps you create these layer names and layer attributes. I'll just double click on it quickly to show you. Uh, so you can practice at home. This is a good practice folder. See, Photoshop wouldn't be what it is today if it wasn't for using layers, because layers was the big revolution when it came out. Because then you can stack images on top of each other. You can freely move things around and do like any kinds of design or collage, which a lot of applications were behind. They couldn't do that. And then Photoshop, you know, has its reputation today. We talked about the Royals even tried to use Photoshop on the, on the Photoshop thing, on, and they caught her and stuff at the, the Princess Kate, right? The situation. So everyone uses Photoshop, even the Royals, right? And and I made a comment about Photoshop. A lot of my friends that own companies, they want to use Photoshop too. They don't have to, but they just want to know to have fun with it, right? So everybody likes to know this program. It's quite quite a it's quite amazing how many people respect it and love it. So here's this folder here with all these animals, right? So if you hide these visibles, basically, it gives you that particular layer. And all you want to do here is make sure you have auto select layer enabled. You can basically move things around like this, click and drag, okay? Then you can do what's called scale. Scale is, um, you can either go edit free transform, which I like to do. And this gives you the option to do this and rotate and stuff, press enter. You can also name the layer like polar bear and stuff so you can acquaint yourself with what's where. Another option that you might have on a default, depending on the update or software that you did, you might have show transform controls enabled. Got to be careful with this one because if it's automatically there, what it does, it just highlights the area and you can then just go increase the size and decrease the size. But the problem is when you do that, you can't just deselect. Okay. You, you have to uh, press enter, okay? Because if you click on something else, it just might not let you do it that easily. I think it's working now though. Let me see here. I guess if you double click or something. I just like to, when you do this, just remember, press enter, and then you can go ahead and click on the other item, just a lot faster. I honestly don't like this. It's For me, it's like a pet peeve. I'd rather have it off, turn it on when you need to, and that's a good way to put it. All right, so this is a quick little exercise. Practice at home with it. Nothing elaborate more than just that, okay? So now let's go to uh, the preference tour. This is a very miscellaneous exercise. It's not even an exercise. It's just there, so I'm not even going to waste my time on it. I don't think even the video talks about it. It's that little. It's a preference. Preferences changes from every version. So this talks about Photoshop like three years ago. It's not the same as it is today. So it's a little obsolete. Is it, is it obsolete? Actually, no, but it's a little, you know, Preferences change, so it's up to your level of preference that you prefer to have, okay? And what are preferences? Well, let me just show you quickly. Photoshop uh, preferences are right over here. So if you go to settings, right, these are the preferences. So you can do general preferences, interface preferences. Every so software has them. Uh, I don't like to mess with them because sometimes they reset. If the only thing you want to do is uh, perhaps, let me just show you one, units and rulers. That one you might want to change it to, you know, pixels instead of inches if the metric seems to be off. And even here, you can go to each preferences and make the changes like uh, colors, transparency and gamuts, performance. Look, the professionals already set up the default preferences to be just fine. You don't have to mess around with them. Unless you have a really good reason, then fine, you can come here and do it. I personally leave them alone because I always do updates and I'm just whatever, just leave the preferences the way they are. Because I do my preferences within the within the file. I'll change the rulers if I have to right there and then to inches or picas and points and stuff. All right, so that's that. Um, next we'll have the layers folder. This one's a good review exercise on how to execute uh, some of the more advanced features in Photoshop. Tell you what, I'll save this for last, okay, for the video there. Then you have blend modes, and the video talks about this as well. So what blend modes are basically is you open up these images and you try different things. So just to show you what I did with this image, if I open it up, right, you have uh, 
Let me just turn this off now. You got this Toblerone logo we got off the internet. A lot of these have like a white background, right? When you have a white background, you can't really see uh, the logo superimposed. So I'm going to delete this one and grab another image because this is a popular thing that you might come across. Let's say you're doing a shopping cart for a website and you're doing your own product promo, merchandise, material promotion. Well, your job might be to put a logo on a shirt. That's a big thing now. A lot of these companies customize, uh, you know, material hats and everything, right? So if you have to set that up for a website, you'll have to literally put together this merch kit, right? Or swag, whatever you want to call it. So the thing with these logos, some of them are not good quality. And I'll show you what I mean. This file should look like this by default. Normal there. They all have like this white background. Do you see that? Most logos on the internet have a white background. Unless you get a PNG or an SVG or a special format, they might not have a white background. So I'm going to just get, get another logo here. Let me get like the Nike logo, okay? Nike is not going to be too happy about this, but that's okay because we're not going to print their shirt, so they don't have to worry about it. There's the Nike logo, okay? I'm going to right-click, copy the image, save it, whichever way you want to do it. I'll save it for now, right? I'll save it on the desktop. I'll go to Photoshop, File, Place, Embedded always, right? There's the logo, okay? And there it's going to go right here. You can see the same problem. It's got this white background, right? So what you can do, obviously, is go there, you know, select this white background with the magic wand, right? I would use the magic wand, click on the white background and delete it, right? But then it tells me I got to rasterize the image because it's placed. So I'll click OK, and then I have to rasterize it. Basically, right-click, rasterize the layer, and then I can press OK. But even this doesn't look too realistic. It looks like it's just put on like that. So there's ways you can super, uh, superimpose colors in a way so they look more realistic, okay? That's what we're getting at here. So now, this wasn't the best example, but you get my idea. So when you place any logo, like this one, and some of these are, look, they're not the good quality. Like even this, to delete the background, you got too much pixels. So the best solution is to do an overlay effect. And the overlay effect looks works like this. Uh, let me select this logo here. This is the overlay effect right here. These are blend modes. Blend is when you blend different colors together to produce results. Like the white diminishes when you use blend modes like uh, overlay, sorry, darken or multiply. This gets rid of the white background. If it's a black background, then you use overlay and soft light. Notice how the black disappeared when I did this. Do you see that? And the white disappeared when I did this because light and dark are two different things. A lot of people use different logos. Uh, if you have like other colors and stuff, you can try other blend modes, but this usually works for black and white because they're the most, you know, um, concentrated logos for most brands. So for this one, I'm going to use uh, multiply. Okay. Or darken. Either one doesn't matter. All right. And if you want to put the laces on top, notice how there's laces in there. So in that case, you have to literally put the, um, you see here, this underneath the hoodie here, and you have to literally take out the part where the laces are, okay? And to do that, you might have to do a little bit of masking, and masking is something we, we're we going to cover again in the video that I showed you, but to quickly show you in a, in a, in a, in a quick um, fashion here is to go to um, this mask tool, it's right to the bottom of the layer it's called layer mask. If you click on that, a second thumbnail shows up. A second thumbnail is like a mask. So that's where you use a black or a white brush to reveal or hide parts of a brush. Similar to quick masking that we did the week before, but this one's a little more layer related. So for that, in that case, I'm going to use a, a brush. Well, that's a big brush. I'm going to make it smaller. I'm using my square brackets beside the letter P. Make the brush smaller and bigger. You can also make the brush smaller and bigger from up here. See, there's the size. I'm going to go with two pixels because this is a low res image. So I got to use a low brush, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just do this. Look, I'm just deleting this part of the Nike logo to make the laces come right through the hoodie because it looks more realistic like that, right? So basically, that's all I did 
to make this look like a realistic shirt with a logo on it. All I did was put a mask here to delete it, right? Or you can use an eraser, whatever works to make it realistic. So that's simple thing, but it works. It does a, it goes a long way. And if you, let's say you make a mistake, let's say you do, you know, that you're like, oh, and the next day you didn't see it like, oh, shoot, look what I did two months ago. So what happens is because you have a layer mask, you can switch the brush to white instead of black. Just press X. The X switches the black and the white foreground color. If it's white on the top, white basically uh, brings back the, the mask. OK, so you're putting white on top of the image. It brings it back. And if you press X, you bring black. It takes away. So it's such a controllable method that it's widely used on most of professionals using Photoshop, just by using masking techniques. So again, the video that I uploaded last week demonstrates all of this. So if you watch that video, you see the stuff in depth, okay? I just want to quickly do a little synopsis on this stuff. All right, so that, that was that. These other items were quite easy. I'm gonna quickly go select this, 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 and this with shift. Look, I selected all of them at the same time, right? And what I'm gonna do is go over here, Again, this is where you set these blend modes. Normal is normal. But if you go to, I guess we got the white background, we're going to go to uh, darken or perhaps multiply. These are the better ones. I think multiply looks better. I'll stick with that. Problem solved. That's how fast you can superimpose logos on merchandise and brand it and maybe put it on a website or something. Right, because that's why you might want to do a shopping cart or build a whole thing with. Because when you do websites, guess what? You're gonna deal with some images, a lot of images sometimes. You might not have a, have a graphic designer to work with. You have to hire someone, so you do it yourself. Right, you you take the extra five thousand dollars that's part of that budget. Right, you take it for your own for your own self. Okay, so this is how you can utilize these techniques for that. The video explains it well. I'm gonna put this away now. OK, the next thing the video talks about is uh, the other type of blend modes. This is another one here. It's called, well, first of all, these are the main three I talked about. Look, there's multiply, there's screen, and there's hard light. Hard light's more like a creative, like an in-between measure. And there's other blend modes. You can experiment with all of them because they're experimental. But these are the main ones that are more technical and they work and explains what the, one's the base color, one's the blend color, one's the result color. On that premise, these blend modes work the way they do, okay? So just read up on this thing, it's pretty simple, and you'll see how blend modes work in Photoshop. And I like to always say, you know what? It's all just experimenting and learning what one does. Okay, uh, this is just a miscellaneous thumbnail, how to make stars, nothing that important. So let's open this one up. As you see it here, this one has a lens flare and behind that has this little like a stars design. And again, I think I go over how to do this if you want. So since this has like a black background, I want to make sure we can see the stars. There's going to be eclipse. When's the eclipse coming up next week or something? The solar eclipse. Everyone's talking about it or the moon's going to block the sun. This hasn't happened in like 80 years. Actually, no, less than that. 40 years. The next time it's going to happen is 80 years from now. So it's a quite spectacular event. You're not supposed to look directly because because the eyes don't recognize the thing. It's very unique. It burns your retina because you won't feel any pain. You'll just go blind. So that's why they say don't stare at this thing, right? You're supposed to wear glasses or whatever. So anyways, that's what's happening. Something like this. Well, then we want to blend this to this background. So I'm going to go uh, to the blend layer here instead of normal. I'm going to go all the way to lighten or screen. Look at that. So if I go lighten or screen, it sees right through, right? That's a good method of implementing to get these blends to work, right? So another example here. And the last one is this one. This one is when you have an image with a background and you want to do something creative. And I did cover this with the MacBook Pro effect two weeks ago. So let me do it again. There's the image on top of this background. So what happens is if I want to do a creative integration of the two or some kind of a montage, I'll change this to, look, you can pick any one, whatever you like, right? This might look good. This might look okay, right? This is maybe not as vivid, but the trick is you go to this thing called hard light. Hard light is what it does. It produces uh, the best of both results. So you get the contrast out of all the colors to come out whether it's the dark colors, the light colors, the colors in between, right? it gives you a nice 
uh, of the two. Okay, so again, it's experimental, but the exercise points out to the hard light effect. Okay, so that's again the video talks about this, and I talk about it, and I do it and stuff, and you can definitely watch that. And what else the video talks about? Uh, effects. This is a good one too. This is uh, how you can use layer styles and layer effects in Photoshop. This is important to you because let's say you want to create a nice, um, like a title or a header for a hero banner on a website. You can do a bevel and emboss, a drop shadow, and an inner bevel effect. How do you do that with CSS, right? It's probably impossible. I'm sure I'm impressed with CSS, the effects it can do with some of these textiles, but some of the stuff you can do in Photoshop, you can't match it with textures and stuff. It's next level stuff, right? Let's see how that works. So go ahead and um, open this file. There's the handout. So this, if you read this through it, it takes you through the steps. The video that I already uploaded talks about all this. So you can watch the video again, I explain it. And then you can go ahead and open this up. And what I did here was, you, you get, this is Rise of the Planet of the Apes, a very popular movie. So here you have like the title. It's not real text, it's an image of text. So what I did here was I, here's a trick, ready? You double click here. Not here, because if you do it here, you rename the layer. That doesn't do anything. That's why you want to make sure your, your window is nicely expanded and big enough you can see all this stuff, right? So you click here where the empty space is beside the layer. That's where you double click, and then you get this layer styles option. And this is where everything happens. Let's call it the magic. This is where the magic happens, right? So again, let me do it again. Double click here, and this stuff comes up. But the thing about this is you don't just go off checking all these little boxes because you got to be careful. The rule is don't put more than two or three at the same time. So with this one, for example, I might do, let's say, um, inner glow this is the one that wants me to do see inner glow you just check it on but don't just do that rather than click on the actual tab then it gives you the options that's related to that effect so i think i picked the wrong one here i think it's drop shadow instead now black is a very good color for a drop shadow you can increase the distance you can increase the the spread the size the opacity you see how it makes it nice and darker right Um, so that's a drop shadow. You can see here the difference before and after. So it kind of has a nice little punchy effect to it. Okay, next is the, the shadow of this planet. So you can then control this as the opacity as well, right? And then I talk about this other thing. It's this is, look, it tells you um, glow and inner glow. So this one has a different effect. See this planet here? Let's really make it pop out, right? Let's make this planet really like shine or make it like really. If this is an effect only Photoshop can produce. Illustrator, forget it. Like this is something you don't bring in Illustrator because it's images. You know what Illustrator does by now? The stuff we did last, last uh, module, right? Logos and drawings. This is images. So you got to treat them differently. So here you go like, uh, you go the glow right here. First you do inner glow, okay? Oops, sorry guys. So you first you do the actual inner glow. And then you want to uh, open up all these different settings here to, uh, to expand the inner glow uh, properties. And you can pick the color right from the left side. So you can basically go through the RGB values or the CM CMYK values to get the correct measure for that specific effect. All right. And then what you want to do is uh, control it from here. So you can pick the yellow. You pick the pink, the orange, the red. See, it affects it right away. I'll go with the yellow. There we go. Nice little orange yellow color. You can also expand the, um, the it's called the choke, the size. You see how it, it expands the actual effect. You can really have a nice um, effect happen. Let's really pump it up even more by applying not just an inner glow, but an outer glow. So I'm going to go to the outer glow option right here. And this one, I'll, I'll stick with the nice light blue, sure. Again, the spread and the size will really, really make this thing pop out now, see? Right, stuff that no other program can control the way Photoshop does. And you can really make this cool effect and have it to your liking, okay? Hey.
I remember it was a Marilyn Monroe portrait. I'm exactly so. As soon as you said the '80s and you mentioned portrait, I know exactly what you're saying, right? Yes. I can show you that actually. Maybe let me finish this part first. I'll be, but remind me please, because I, I do want to show you that. Okay. Okay. And I'll, I'll even show you what you're saying here. So this is again, you can apply some nice effects. And pretty much this is it, right? They see by doing little things like that, you're bringing up these uh, elements to come out more the titles, the planets, and whatever. So again, the video demonstrates all this. So please watch the video. I, I cover this thing in more in depth and I go over some settings and stuff. But again, just like I am right now, just covering it quickly. Um, There's another one here I think we used. This one here. Right? This one, it's look, steel. Like you can produce your own uh, effects. I didn't even show you how to make one from scratch. So the video covers this too. So what you do here, you double click and you do a bevel and emboss like this. Bevel and emboss makes it look like real chiseled uh engraved metal like you have keys engraving and stuff because without this right you can't really see it so you can really pop texture out like you guys see stuff that's engraved in wood metal rock stone all those textures you can make things pop out like it's real okay so that's another thing i talk about in the video you can watch just by simply double clicking and going through the effects and yes there's a handout for that as well so it talks about all these little settings, how they work, why they work. Just do a quick read, nice and simple, okay, step by step. And all these other ones are missing. Like I don't, this is don't don't think we have to cover all this. Those are just extra materials that I have. The ones that I'm pointing out is the ones that actually covering the lesson, and those are the folders so far. There's one more, layer masks. This one is really important because it's exactly what I. Excuse me, exactly what I did earlier when I wanted to hide that jersey with the laces. This goes in depth how to work with layer masks to a deeper level, right? So this helicopter example gives you a nice idea. Okay. This is the chopper here. Oh, it's already done. So I'm gonna just I'm just gonna undo it. I'm gonna throw this in the garbage here. The garbage, the trash can, and just get rid of it. And notice here there's like a helicopter flying around, right? Have you guys got pulled over by a helicopter before? I haven't, and I don't look forward to that. But to make it look like the helicopter is hiding, there's places in the US that they have aircraft patrol. So the air, aircraft is hiding here, but you're not supposed to see it. So to make this a real effect, it says, look, speed limit enforced by aircraft. So what we did is we added a mask to hide the helicopter behind the trees. How do you hide the helicopter behind the trees, right? So you put a mask. So you go over here, layer, layer mask, reveal all. Again, I do this on the video. You click on it. That second thumbnail that shows up, just like we did with the with the hoodie earlier, with the white hoodie and the Nike logo. Same thing here. We click on the mask. We use a we use a brush, a paintbrush. The brush is right there. You pick a black or white brush, always one or the other. The black one. I'll make the brush bigger. The black one uh, takes away, okay? And the white one puts it back. It uh, will subtract or add, basically, add or subtract. So I'm gonna go with the black one and do the subtraction. So I'm gonna go subtract, 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 like this, all the way, like this. I'm going a little extra just to show you what happens next, right? So now I'm gonna zoom in, and I'm gonna bring these parts back to mimic the trees contour and edges to make it look realistic. So I'll switch it back to the white brush. I'm gonna make the brush smaller and simply go over these details. Maybe I'll even had a softer feel to it. The hardness will be like 30. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and do this kind of 30 brush effect to make it look like it's hiding behind the trees, just like that, see? There we go. So if I zoom out now, it'll look more realistic that the chopper is hiding behind the trees. And all it is is this little mask that's creating this illusion that that's happening. Okay. All right, again, the video talks about this. You can watch the video. I go through this and have some fun and do the whole thing. All right, uh, the other file that I talk about, and I talk about these other ones too. So when you watch the video, we'll do a little bit of stuff with uh, Trump there. But, uh, I didn't pick these files, these are older files. There's one with the frog and the fish. 
There's one with the sunflowers. Just watch the video. I do little masking effects and stuff and watch. OK, so that's what the video does. And I think I wrap it up with um, the layers one. This is like a to test your skill. Once you do all these tutorials that I mentioned, this one puts you to the test. So if you follow these steps, you should fully understand all these advanced techniques. So take your time. You have to invest some time, OK, maybe a couple of hours and go through this and learn how to do scale and blend and mask. All the stuff I talked about is all here in one exercise. This used to be an exercise that you hand in, but I'd rather give you more creative projects, and that's what I'm doing with the websites and other things. But nonetheless, treat this like an exercise and do it. Okay, so you can actually learn from it. Because at the end of the day, it's for you. So this has all these different files for you to build. So basically, you're going to build this from scratch. Okay. By following the steps. Again, the video covers that. Okay. So if you have any questions, let me know. I can always bring this back up later and give you some help. So that was last week's lesson. Okay. That was the video I uploaded. Talks about all this stuff. Okay. So now you understand what basically we would have covered here in class. But like I said, I couldn't make it. So I had that video there. So let's go on uh, today's lesson, which is this other folder. Two, three, four. So now we're commencing the class 11. We're going to go right down to this module folder here. It's called class 10 and 11. So that's why it's part of last week and this week. So we're going to go to this web page image sources. Let's go ahead and download this folder. If you click on it, it's going to let you download the image sources right to the desktop. Okay. And in addition to that, there's a thing called here generating image assets link. So this is a great resource to explain things what I'm doing right now in depth. So this one actually tells you how these oh you have to click on this other link. Okay. And this is the one here. Okay. So this talks about all your um it has some files you can download and practice these techniques. But in a nutshell, it tells you how to generate image assets from layers. So once you know how to create layers in your Photoshop file, you can convert layers to image assets. And why is this important to you? Because this title for this class is called Web Production Techniques. So what better way than producing uh, files for your websites, right? So Web Production Techniques means you're producing whatever means necessary everything that's required for you to build or produce websites or even mobile apps. So this method here really holds to the test where you can actually produce these images and put them in your website that you're building. So this will help you with your websites. Okay, and I'll explain to you how this will work in a, in a today in a demonstration. So this is uh, pretty much, actually, I don't know if we're gonna get a chance to do this today, but it's part of the actual execution. Even for next week, we'll dive into this stuff. So it's like, Things that we're doing from now till the end of the semester. Okay, so that's the link that I have here. It's called generating image asset link. Uh, web template PSD. Let's see what this is. I'll download it as well on the desktop. Layers.zip. I already covered that this uh, just earlier, so I'm going to move this up here. That's the first one. Maybe I'll move this down here. There we go. Website mockup PSD. Let's look at that also. I'd like to show you all these files and then we're going to dive into them. Okay. And we also have desktop mobile PSD because that's important. These days, look, 10 years ago, uh, 10 years ago, we started doing this. Let's, uh, let's, let's go 15 years ago. 15 years ago, we didn't care about this. Did we care about this? No, we didn't. We didn't care about how websites looked on phones. <laughs> we didn't care. Right, we started caring ten years ago because everyone started using their phones, and now especially everyone's on their phones. People use less computer, more phone. This is your computer, so when you build websites, they have to comply with mobile, mobile, um, um, what's it called? Responsive measures. So it's got to be responsive websites. So you know, there's even a Google thing I do with my UX class. It's called mobile first. You know, first we have to look at the mobile market, then we look at the web market because it's how it is. So everything you're building in your, you know, the stuff you guys are learning, it definitely helps you with the mobile conversion also. 
So I'm going to save this to show you what that is as well. And this is the link I explained. So all these files pretty much pertain to the lesson. So I'm going to get into it right now. So this is your desktop mobile quick kind of synopsis on what it is. So this is a website. What is a website really? It has a header, a body, and a footer. Whatever you put in the body is most of the stuff that's in there. Videos, images, text, right? All your code is set up that way, right? Everything else is kind of surrounded by these three principles. So when you convert it to a mobile design, it becomes this header, body, footer. Right? Same thing, just the sizes change. So in Photoshop, you can control these uh, aspects and you know size ratios, and you can have both. Okay, when you do the preliminary mock-up design, because you're not gonna go there. Let's say you, let's say you're doing a big website for a client. You're not gonna code a website and spend like 40 hours and do like you know a decent enough job to show them. Hey, do you like this? That's not how it works. You got to do a design first. That's a lot easier. What color are you like? Red? Okay. Uh, what's that? What font do you like? What, where's your logo? Where's your? You do the placement first, like you're doing with your UX UI class, right? Same thing. You got to do a, a. You got to do an actual prototype because that's easier to make than it is to build code a website. Now, I've done I've done websites in WordPress, let's say, on the fly. Okay. Because guess what? The client already kind of said, just make me a website. I don't care. And for those kind of clients, sure, you build them a website in WordPress, and here you go. That's what you get. You do the, work, the website in like two hours, right? It's done. But sometimes these guys require a custom website. That's when you take the whole approach like this. Then you build a prototype. Then you build a design. You get it approved. You have a team of people working together, a team of designers, professionals, okay? And you have an art director. You have all these channels of communication. And that's how you do a big job. Smaller jobs, to be honest with you, sometimes this helps, of course, in every scenario. Small, big, doesn't matter. But some, sometimes people skip this step. They just get, let's just put a website together. Pick a WordPress template and let's build a website. Right? That's reality. That's what people do. All right, next one. This is your wireframe. This is what a website, I'm going to build this with you today. This wireframe here. Okay, so we're going to learn how to make a wireframe, how to properly do one. And then how to put these right image sources in the boxes, right? And grayscale is important. Why are we picking grayscale? Don't care about, I don't, we don't know what colors the client has. This can be for any clients. This could be Amazon. I don't know, right? Whatever. We can just put in, that could be a carousel, image carousel. This could be products like e-commerce, a shopping cart. That could be a search engine, search bar. We can dress this up to the nines, whatever you want to do, right? That's how we do it. And this is a real example of an actual website done in Photoshop. Uh, notice it's got a little bit of Latin in there, right? So you can see it. Uh, this is not a complete version, but it's something that you can practice with. It's for a restaurant, right? You can help me with some of the Spanish uh, translation. So I'm going to open it up here, right? And there's the website. Let me show you how compl complex these things can get. So like I said, look at this. Look at all the layer folders. This is 16 by 9, the website. This is your header. See the header? This is the slide. This is the banner. This is the testimonials. This is the specials. And this is the footer. And in those layers, there's more layers, like in those folders, there's more layers. Look at this. There's so many things that happen here. Uh, there's over 50 layers. So it doesn't matter if there's 50 layers. It could be five. That's not the point. The point is how much detailed information is included. So the more layers you have, the more detailed control you can assert. Okay. So basically to show you, <clears throat> let me zoom in here. Right. So look, here's the menu, right? You have that. Now, these testimonials, <clears throat> this, for example, right? This can go over here, right? This can go over here. This can go down here. These pictures can go in different places, right? Right? So you get, you get to build this. I think this is glitching on me a little bit. And you get to basically create um the website like that and if i open up the guides right and the actual columns it's built all the websites that are built by designers use a 12 column grid 
Why 12? Because 12 is the best common denominator for all the possible numbers. Let's look at Amazon and I'll show you why even Amazon uses the same structure. Um, <clears throat> There's Amazon here, right? Look at Amazon. How many how many boxes do you see? <clears throat> One, two, three, four, right? Four goes into 12. How many times? Three. Three times four, 12. So they're using a, a three column grid, three column, three column, three column times four, it's 12. That's why everyone uses a 12 column grid. That's that's the staple. That's the blueprint of any design, right? That's why they use that. And all the menu, this stuff doesn't matter if the header and the menus. That's something you do, you program anyways. But as far as design goes, yeah, everything is set up to three, four, two. So two goes into 12, six goes into 12, three goes into 12, four goes into 12. That's why you see those common denominator numbers, okay? You won't see like five. If you see five, it's because it's one of these carousels or something. You're just moving things around in a more JavaScript fashion, okay? But and then look six here right so that that's how they break this stuff up doesn't matter what caliber of website it's the same principles apply right and amazon has a fixed width look at this how wide is amazon's website right look at this see that gray area it stops right there right so what's the actual width right so the actual width do you know what the width is let's do command shift four let's measure it Using my screen capture technique, command shift four. I'll start from the left here, right? Watch this to the right. I thought it's 1500 pixels. I already measured it, right? There we go. 1500 pixels, 1500 pixels width. I'm talking about the fixed parameters. The other stuff is whatever. I mean, you can expand the window the size of the, the room. That's not the point, but it's fixed at that number. So, whatever images you put, they stay within that position. Right? That's why it's 1500 pixels. Some websites have seen percentage. They scale to the responsiveness of the browser. This website, you, you do this. Look, they don't even care about it being responsive. <laughs> why they don't care? Why? Because they know I'm using a computer. It's a, they have a, de a detection ID. And the, the other one is they have an app. They don't care. Most of the stuff I bought stuff from Amazon the other day, I use the app. I don't hardly use the website. I use my app to order stuff, right? Right? My wife likes to use the website. So when I get home, I see stuff on the cart all the time. I'm like, what are you doing? That's enough. <laughs> I, I took my credit card out. That's the best thing to take your credit card out. No more, right? So <laughs> Amazon's becoming like too, too convenient for people these days. All right. So you have, uh, you have four, three, two, right? Same columns go. Uh, did you guys look at the bottom of the Amazon's core code? Did you look at this yet? Do you page source? No, you haven't? Yeah, the bottom, look, yeah. The, the count goes meow, yeah. Did you see that one? Yeah, so look. It's funny, right? Yes, look, there's the the cat, the, the duck that meows, right? It's funny. Even these guys have sanity. They have some fun with what they do to have some fun with it. All right. Okay, so let's get back to our thing now. This is just an example of how complicated the website could get with all these different you know, parts and stuff. Uh, we're going to do something like a similar, okay? Just a little easier to comprehend from the ground up. So I'm not going to save this, okay? Um, this is a Photoshop template. You have all this. I gave it to you. So if you open this up, this is already set up for you. But would it be nice to know how to do this from scratch, right? This is what I want to make sure this video captures me demonstrating how to build this from the ground up, okay? And um, I think I made this based on my my website. Do you guys know my websites? I build websites too, you know. <laughs> but I use more like platforms now because I use, use directory mostly. So my, my main one is the canadianmadeproducts.ca. See, this is the one that I like to kind of show you. And yes, this is a, you know, I have a, I have a tablet version, right? And I have a mobile version. So it does work both, right? And it does have an integrated, you know, design. You can search for products and stuff. Let's say you're looking for tires for your car, right? So if I type in tires, you know, let's see what shows up. There we go, Canadian Tire Pro. So I do have a, a, a query inside that people register. So if you click on it, 
it takes you to that business and you can call them and make a, an appointment and get your stuff serviced and whatever. So I do have like a map integrated widget. Anyways, the point is, if I want to rebuild this, let's say for whatever reason, I can skeleton this and make it up, make it like an actual wireframe and build another website for it, right? And then I'll go use my database and stuff. So basically, whether it's a website like this or something else, you want to make sure you can take the proper, um, you know, steps necessary to make it happen. So that's why I'm going to build this example just to show you how it's done. So let's do this from the beginning. OK, so pretend this I'll use this as a reference, but I won't even pretend it's not even there. So are you watching or are you doing this with me? You'd rather watch because this is being recorded. You want to do it? If you feel like doing it, that's fine. OK. OK. Right. So I'm going to create a new file right now. So file new. OK, new file. It's better if you do it with me now, it's nothing like doing it live, like an actual lecture. You kind of immerse yourself more with uh, with the environment. Then if you watch the video, you might you know, be in a different mood. You might fall asleep listening to me. Hope you guys don't fall asleep listening to me. <laughs> I fall asleep listening to myself sometimes. <laughs> I don't like listening to myself, actually. Which one? Oh, you did? Oh, you caught it? Oh, nice. Oh, very good. There you go. Subscribe. Subscribe and like because you get all the goodies. <laughs> no, honestly, I'm gonna grow this thing. Eh? It's gonna become if you if you look for Humber Photoshop now, like my videos are like top already. Just because I, I started this last year. I mean, I should have done it a long time ago, but nobody really needed it. And I'm not doing it for me, I'm doing it for my students, really. It's not about me. Really. So let's go, let's do this now. A new file in Photoshop. Look, we're doing a website, so we're gonna go right to web. So go to the web setting right there, okay? And look at the sizes we have. Web common, large, medium, minimum, or small. Which one do you guys think will work? Which one of these? I like large, right? Because it, it'll, it'll fit bigger or equal to, you know that saying? So large will capture Amazon's 1500 dimension, right? If you do 1440, it's a little short. Although that will work too. A lot of people like to use 1440, right? If I taught you this 15 years ago, guess what size we'll use? 800 by 600, right? <laughs> yeah, there was no thousand pixels. The TVs were still 720, what was it? 640, 480, right? 720 came what after, then came 1080p. Then 2K, 4K, 8K, all these Ks are coming out. The pixels keep getting condensed and multiplying. Anyways, so let's go with 1920, 1080p, right? This is the size here. Um, do me a favor, this artboard thing, just for now, I'm going to shut it off because I want to keep it simpler. If the artboard is on, it might cause a little bit of a confusion with how it works. I like to use the artboard feature when there's more than one page. Now I'm going to show you how to create more than one page so we can always enable the artboard on and off even after. So just keep it off for now just to keep things more simple. Resolution is always 72. And of course, the color mode is always RGB, right? So let's go ahead and click OK, create, and there's, there we have it. Right. Now I can go to image size and show you exactly what the size is again. In case you change your mind, because I know the artboard is easy to re, uh, resize. Image size is quite helpful here because it's a white canvas. You won't distort nothing. There's no images. So you can resize this to any size of your liking, even after the fact. But don't do it be don't do it after you design it. Do it when it's blank. So in case you want to add some more heights, I'm gonna make the height 2,000 pixels. Okay. Oh, but make sure you know what cancel because you have to turn off the proportions and stuff. It's going to mess you up. Cancel for now. But if you want to do that, just go to image size. Uh, canvas size might be better in this case. Canvas size. This way you won't alter the proportions. So canvas size instead of image size. Although they both work. This one doesn't give you any type of relationship with the constraints. So you can just type in, I don't know, let, let's go 1600 pixels. Just, just a little longer vertical wise, right? You don't have to even do this, but just to kind of show you how you can control the sizes, how you do it. You know how else you do it? 
my favorite way crop tool there's the crop tool right here this crop tool lets me just resize the page like this like that any way i want you can make it bigger smaller i can go like this press enter the crop tool very very handy very easy uh it works with images works with artboards works with anything okay or like i said want to get technical do the canvas size and type in a numerical value i'll do a 1600 again hit enter okay now the first thing we should do is implement the 12 column rule right so how do we do 12 columns well first we need a ruler so press command r or control r on a pc make sure this is pixels to do that right click and change it to pixels you might have inches i don't know what your units are but changes to pixels so you can see here 100 200 300 400 look uh 1920 uh, right like that now if i taught you this five years ago guess what you would have to do this we would have to spend an hour doing some some math and calculating like 100 pixels here 100 pixels there and then we take another how many pixels this way then we do a little gap then we do another column keep watching me don't do this part okay just watch me because this is what not to do because times have changed so i would do basically 12 columns like this do you get me not anymore photoshop finally said okay by special request from the people the community we said listen make this easier and it's not a big because once you do it once you can reuse it later for next time as a template you don't have to do it again but some people didn't even like that part so I said, okay, so Photoshop did away, so you can do this. You go to go to view, guides, okay? Watch this one here, new guide layout. The next best thing since sliced bread when they came to the web design prototype team, right? <laughs> Layers was the next best thing since sliced bread. So new guide layout, and basically this gives you that. But if you don't get to my settings now, Look, you can do six columns. You can do eight columns. Sometimes there's a different requirement. I don't know. It's not always 12, but 12 is the most common denominator that most designers go with. So we will go with 12, okay? We are going to pick a margin, which means we're going to have some edges on the side. Let's say we're doing Amazon. So what's 1920 minus 1500? Who's the mathematician here? 1920 minus 1500. What's that? 420. What's 420 divided by half? 210. So that means if I go 210 from the left and 210 from the right, what's left? 210 from the left, 210 from the right, what's in the middle? 1500. So that's my Amazon setup right there. So if I want to do that, I'll just go from the from the top. I'll do 250. Uh, sorry, I'll do 50. The bottom I'll do 25. Left 210 right 210 okay the gutter i don't know maybe i'll do 15 pixels 12 columns you see that so watch my numbers again 12 columns right 50 pixels for the top but just like 50. maybe i'll do more for the menu and stuff maybe i'll i'll, I'll increase this to 200 actually maybe even uh 300. i might have like a nice big menu there. No, that's a lot too much here. Let's do maybe 150. 150. Okay. Fine. 200. So 200, 210. The bottom will be uh, 30, and the other side is 210. The most important for you is the 210 and the 210 from left and right to match the Amazon requirement. 200, 210. 30 to 10 and clear existing guys in case you have some previously you don't delete those you have to do those and then center columns i don't think that's necessary yeah it won't do anything because the way we set it up the color of course i like light gray it's easy on the eyes and you can see other colors and just hit okay this is it and you can save this as future template for other websites. You don't have to do this again, because this used to take one hour to create. This was a one hour exercise.
Okay, so what happens next is we're going to, um, you know, create the wireframe design on this. But I don't want to move these by accident. You see, I'll just drag this out. Okay. So I don't want to have to move these uh, columns. Okay. So to do that, you're going to go to View, Guides, Lock the Guides. Lock means you can't accidentally start messing around with them. Okay. You can always unlock them. Okay. But when they're locked, they're locked. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and save this as a website wireframe. I will call this uh, Amazon. Okay. Why not? We'll do an Amazon build. Okay. Amazon build. We're not going to get every little detail because it's going to take us like probably hours and hours, but we'll do the meat and the potatoes, like the main stuff. And if you're a vegetarian, I apologize. We'll do like the, the broccoli and the, we'll do the broccoli and the asparagus. All right. <laughs> all right. So we're going to go on the computer here. On the desktop, Photoshop, save. Right. I'm going to just mirror Amazon on the visual end here just to quickly have it loaded. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, using our are rectangles. So there's an object tool, just like in Illustrator. These are your object tools in uh, or vector tools in Photoshop. Right down to the bottom left corner, if you see, remember the T, the type tool, there's the hand right there, the little pointer, that's where your rectangle, this is like you're gonna be your best friend for creating these uh, uh, wireframes. So this rectangle tool, I mean, we can do this in Illustrator too, honestly. But Photoshop is better when it comes to the layouts and the guides and stuff. It's just better for this stuff. And then when it comes to images and things and generating image assets, see, Illustrator can't do this stuff. Illustrator would be better with drawing boxes. Yeah, I know it's easy. Just draw a bunch of rectangles and stuff. But the way we're doing it here is more instrumental and more purposeful for that. So here we go. We're going to go from the top right across. We're going to grab a rectangle all the way across to the other side, right? And if uh, you know if I want to change the color or whatever, I'll just click on the fill from the top. I can change it to a different um, grayscale value. And yes, there's grayscale values if you look deep right here. So I'm gonna go with maybe like a darker gray. It's gonna work with my scheme. Okay. There we go. There's my header. That could be like an Amazon color later and stuff. We can. Try some, it could be an Alibaba website. I don't know, right? Some other uh, popular platform for e-commerce. So that's the, the thing there. So the next we'll have like a menu going across and that's probably within this. So we can maybe do another a supplementary rectangle, you know, even like do another one across this way. And this could be a lighter shade of gray. Like that, right? Now, what's the height of this one? See, when, when you draw these rectangles, right? There's the width, 1925. There's the height, 63 pixels. I like even numbers. So I don't like 63, okay? I just like 60 or 55 or 50, like even numbers. So it's easier for you to do your math later if you do some CSS, HTML stuff. So better yet, let's make it like, I don't know, just 60 pixels, right? All right, so now what? So now let's get the other elements in there. We have like a nice header image going across like this, uh, promoting a product or whatever. So that can be an area we got to um, integrate along with these other placement holders for images and products and thumbnails. So I'm going to go ahead and make those things happen now. So I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, another rectangle, basically, and uh, make sure nothing is selected. This one's going to go down like this. 
Look at the height as I'm drawing, holding the mouse. 500 and 500 pixels, roughly, right? 500 pixels, 1920 pixels. You can also pick the color this way. You can also pick the color from the top. I'm going to go really on the light side on this one, right? So it's like a background design. If you notice this image here on Amazon has like a fade. The fades are very popular on websites when they fade down like this. It fades to nothing. I see a lot of the websites that fade the edges. So it looks like it's infinite kind of space. A lot of the, my favorite NFL teams did that with sports websites. They have like the edges faded out, faded. Um, even like some of the other sports websites have it. Let me see if we can catch one right now quickly for you guys. Toronto Maple Leafs, even the team, I think, has a similar website. Let's see if it's still there. Right? Yeah, anyways, when you catch the edges, if there was an image here, like it fades out. So they're doing a fade on purpose. So. It doesn't just abruptly end and then it looks kind of like weird and stuff, right? So that's why they do these uh, fades. Anyways, nonetheless, we'll do a vertical one in this case. There's no image. So what we'll do instead is we're going to do a gradient. So this, this rectangle here, I'm just going to double click here, double click here. I want to make sure my layers are nice and visible. I'm going to produce a, a gradient result for this, which will be Perhaps. Okay, let's do it using the layer style I showed you earlier. So watch this on the right side here. If I click here on the right side, like that, you can either do what's called the gradient overlay. Okay, and here you can do an actual gradient, right? And you can pick a gradient if you want. Maybe do like a black and white gradient, and you can make this. Uh, perfectly go like 90 degrees so it's that way and you can switch it so it's reversed so it's black to white white to black whatever you want the reverse to be right you can then change the colors a bit so this black can be like a gray right so it's like one of these more subtle right So again, I did all this. I double clicked on the layer. I clicked on layer style. I clicked on gradient overlay. And I picked a gradient that's black and white, which is the basics. And then I, I the angle was 90 degree, which was a straight vertical angle. And I just did a, a reverse, white to black, black to white, whatever you like to do, reverse. And I clicked on this gradient and I switched this black swatch to a gray swatch. I left the white alone because the white's the base background color, so it blends seamlessly to the back. And that's how this was built. Right. Bless you. I'm going to stop for now and try organizing my website because it's getting a little already busy with all these things that I'm doing. So I'm going to call these two rectangles here. Notice that the order is backwards, eh? So I'm going to put this one right to the top, okay? This one's going to go underneath, and this one's going to go on the bottom. So watch from top to bottom. Top, this is the header, this is the nav bar or the menu, right? This is the header. This is like the, um, this could be also part of the header section if you want to call it the hero banner or whatever. Maybe I'll put this whole thing, I'll select all these layers. I'm going to press Command G or right click group or click on this little folder here. Or you can also go here and select convert to uh, not smart object. Don't do that. Uh, new group. Okay. I just like to use Command G for group. Just like in Illustrator, we learned that shortcut. Here, it's going to group the layers into a folder. So please do that shortcut because that's exactly what's going to happen. It's going to organize it for you. And then I'm going to rename the group, and I'm going to call it header. Remember, we're going to keep it very simple. Header, body, footer. That's it. 
You can get fancy later with sections and all these other things, right? Just keep it simple and it works. So that's the header. So then I'm going to just deselect the header, click back on the background, and work with the other elements right now. Again, we're basing this on Amazon's uh, architecture design. So here we have a nice header with the menu. But we can later add the dress up stuff. Now we have these sections, these four sections for image holders. So next I'll use the rectangle tool. And if you notice here, look, like there's one, two, three, there's four placement holders. I'll just do four. I'm not gonna bother about these two splits here. So I'll do one, two, three, four. Okay. So that means every three columns is gonna take up one space. So I'm gonna go to this rectangle tool and just simply go one, two, three down well this should be oops let me just move this down here down here because it's passing the rect and tell you what i'm going to put this on the top for now just so we can see it if you don't see the rectangle move it to the top layer because this gradient thing that we did you know what i'm going to do here I apologize about this. I'm just going to move this rectangle out, the one with the gradient. I'm going to pull it out from there like that. And maybe perhaps keep these below. I know it's a little tedious, but so the header is separate and the body is going to be these elements here. So I'm going to put another. I can even select these two layers, command G, call this body. And everything I do from now on is going to be inside the body folder. So once you get acquainted with how this works, it's very easy to organize your stuff. So this will be the body, right? Now watch this. Option, drag, shift. So there's another one. There's another one. And there's another there's four total. This will be my placement holders for the website. Again, Amazon. It's got the four. We're going to have the same four looking setup. We can put images later, colors. Can make it look better than Amazon if you want, right? Whatever you want to design. Okay. I'm not going to follow their trend. I'm going to mix it up a bit just to keep it more interesting. But we, you get the gist of it, right? You can look at anything and remake and change it and whatever you want to do. So from now on, I'm just going to kind of take my own course. I'm going to draw the rectangle tool again and simply just go. This time I'll do, you know, I'll do two, like one. Two. So that takes up six columns because six times two is 12. Right. So, whatever domination you want to do, you can build your website based on that. And now, as far as the colors go, I use just different shades. That's the body. There's the body. There's the header. And now I'm just going to make the footer. The footer is going to be pretty easy. Well, it's a lot of backlinks and um, it's got the. Um, um, site map, the site map, the backlinks, everything that's down here. So to mimic that again, we're going to do something another. I'll make it smaller than their typical, you know, photo area. I'm just going to simply use a rectangle and just make it go across this way. Right? That's the footer. <clears throat> the height will be 150 pixels. There's the height. Okay. So if I if I do save this file one more time, and this will be look just for the sake of the um, structure here, I'm gonna call this footer. I'm gonna put this rectangle inside this folder. I'm gonna move this folder to the bottom of the body. So now I have a nice 
um, semantic kind of setup going on. And of course, the background can also, you know, I can just leave it alone. So you have the header, the body, and the footer all set up here on the page. I press FF tab, command R. You know, you can see where I'm going with this. You can expand it more vertically. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of investing more time in building it. But as far as the primary structure, it's ready to go. Right now, we just have to put graphics and make it look like a real site, which we will. We'll dress it up next. But this for a wireframe is good because you can communicate this to your clients. Say, listen, we're going to put four images that way or four products. We're going to put two videos down there. We're going to put maybe a blog or something. Basically, you're explaining what your design plan is. And once that's delivered and executed, you go to the next step by implementing colors, textures, images, graphics, fonts, all that good stuff comes later. Right? But see how easy it is. In, I could have done this in Illustrator too. Very easy. But what's next is more important. That's why Photoshop kind of takes the lead when it comes to this stuff. <clears throat> So I'm going to pause for a second and just come around and make sure everyone is doing well, and we'll continue. I'll also grab a fisherman's friend. So, better. This is recorded, right? So you can watch it later if you want to exactly. But that's okay. It doesn't have to be graded and fancy like this. As long as you have the, you have the uh, column set up, you're good. You're still in yeah, that's right. Okay, you can look at you. Oh, you're telling me things. That's a nice question. Good questions. Like, good questions. 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 Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it. I just, what I do is usually is, um, uninstall stuff and I'm looking to install it again based on what I need to use. I think I have CSX. I, right now, I have, <laughs> I don't have, like, currently, the one that I need for, uh, on my accessories. But I'm 
Okay, so this is good. Now let's make this look like a more uh, of a visual design by adding colors and some other things that we can enhance it with. So keep this saved as a separate file. This is a grayscale, right? This is a good desktop version. Um, in that case, let's save another one. Do a, um, do a save as or save a copy. Let's do another copy. Actually, do me a favor, just do save as. We'll do another version this way because this way it won't open up a separate one. And we'll call this one two. So it's it's a number two. That means the, the revised version. Maybe we'll call it color with um I'm gonna use the right terminology here because that's called like a basically a rough a prototype, like a rough render or preliminary. And what you want to call this one is like um like a fully rendered version, okay? So we'll call it uh, with color or full render. Full render two. Full render. All right, so full render version means we're gonna put all the colors and the graphics and everything that supports the visuals. I have to close that door. Rendered version. And now we're going to utilize the sources that I asked you to get. So download, if you haven't already, go to the website, the Blackboard, and download these uh, web page image sources. Okay, you need these. So download those just so we don't scavenge the internet for pictures and stuff and waste time. And if you open that folder, you'll see like a um, some images in there. If you uncompress the, you know, the contents, you'll see these pictures. This is a texture. This is some kind of a lot of shoes, I guess you'll see here. Okay, uh, footwear, some background images, some nice quality pictures we can use for the website. Okay, just some stuff we can use. Okay, go. Let's start with the color first. So this gonna this gonna be like an actual uh, color that we're gonna change from grayscale. The first thing you can do is go to the appearance fill here. You can actually pick Amazon's. Uh, I don't know, have like an indigo gray color or something if you want to go with that. Or we can just pick our own color, right? Um, in case you want to sample their color, right? You could. Um, there's a there's these little tools you can get. You can do eyedropper and get their colors and copy and paste. You can also do command shift four. Okay. And do a screen capture. <laughs> you do a screen capture. If you go back here, okay. I can I can temporarily, okay, just go uh just go here and just paste. Well, not paste, I gotta place it. Well, this is temporarily measure. Place embedded. There's the screen capture. There's a screen capture. Okay, so there's my screen capture. I can just use this just to grab the colors to copy them. Okay, so if I have this in front of me, I, I'm going to go with this color here. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to go to the eyedropper tool and pick this exact color, right? Now that it's saved, I can copy and paste the hexacode. So there's the hexacode 232E3E. Might be not be exactly the same one, but that's the one that's resampling it too. I'm going to copy that code. Uh, you can do this two ways. You can even sample it directly by simply going to the, to the move tool here, right? Click on this, click on the fill. 
now watch carefully. It's this little color wheel. You can click on that. And then as soon as you move the cursor, it'll sample that color. Or you can just copy and paste the hexacode color, whatever is easier, okay? Uh, whatever, I'm just showing you both methods. And then that color becomes that one, okay? Maybe I'm gonna uh, fill this menu. Yellow color, okay. Let's <clears throat> make it a little brighter so you can see it. Right, so you can see the Amazon color. And I know it's not really the Amazon colors, but I want to show you how you can change it as well. And this one also can be from the color wheel. Right. Or you can just reverse it. Once you pick the colors, they're already saved. So you can always go back and change the color value at any given time. Okay, so you can go change this one, click on that one, and change it to any color that you chose previously, right? So I can go with the darker one, the lighter one, whatever. Okay. I guess because it's my my screen is dark, you can't really see the dark and the light blue. So I'm just going with the with the lighter one for now. Okay, the lighter one. This I'm gonna delete. This was temporarily. I'm just gonna delete that image that I placed. That was a little trick I wanted to share with you how to sample colors from a real website. You can screen capture it, snatch the colors just like that. All right, this this uh, thing here that we have this pattern. This is like a rectangle. What we can do here is place the pattern. Okay, maybe one of the patterns that I have, I can place it in there. So what I'm going to do is simply go to File, uh, Place Embedded, right? Go to my desktop, the image sources that I pointed to earlier. There's the texture that I have. That is the only way we can kind of utilize the nice texture. I'll put that in the background. So now to have it like fade out, I know it looks a little distracting. We'll make it subtle. Look, we can do subtle things like by going to blend mode. Look, you can do blend modes if you want. Let's do like screen because that will really blend out nicely to the gradient that we already have. Or lighten, screen or lighten. Lighten, okay? And then you can change, look, the opacity. See the opacity? You can change the opacity too. So it'll become like the background. All right, whatever you get the idea. Okay, uh, so then we're going to, uh, and again, re realistically, I'm not going to put a texture, it's distracting. Uh, as far as design goes, I would totally not recommend this, to be honest with you. Textures are be careful with textures because they can really take away from some of the stuff, it's distracting, to be honest with you, right? But I'm just going to go with this for now just to kind of play with the stuff that I have, right? Um, now I'm getting to the real important stuff of placing images. So these are the rectangles that are part of the body. So I'm going to close the header, okay? The header is done. So this is the body now. Let me show you how to place images in your website properly, okay? So you got one, two, three, four. Okay? I'm going to move them up just a bit. Maybe the whole body. Move it up a bit. I'm just making some space. So, one, two, three, four, right? Okay, here's the first look. Here's the first rectangle, right? 
uh, because this is important in terms of placement. I'm going to go open up my rulers and drop two more guides. One there just to trap the top, one at the bottom, just in case I have to reestablish new things. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. So my parameters are established and I can put stuff wherever I want. And that one as well. Okay. Sure. One for the footer because I didn't move that one. So I did some horizontal guides to help me plan this out properly. Now watch what happens with this rectangle here when it's selected, right? I'm going to go to file, place embedded, always. I'll show you the difference between linked and embedded. Linked means you can edit the file externally, but if you lose the file, then you're going to have an issue bringing it back later. This is your safer approach. And if you go back uh, in the earlier days of Photoshop, there was no two placement options. There's only one. And the only one was called place. There's no place embedded. There was no place linked. It was just place. And place was embedded. So linked was added after for the reasons of editing the images outside of Photoshop. So that's fine. But let's stick with embedded because that's the original one that they had. So embedded is the one we're sticking with. And now that my screen came back here, I'm going to go ahead and choose the image. Let's go with, uh, I don't know, let's go with this one here, the first one. I don't know why it's called black and white. It's got the red and blue shoe, whatever. Just click on it. Bring it up to the top here, okay, like that. You can even rotate this image if you want, okay? And resize it like this. Press enter. Right. You're not going to. I'm not going to do this. Look, I'm not going to distort the image to fit it in the box. Do you understand why? Why don't I do this? Why can't I do that? Because you're distorting the picture. Yeah, if it's a person, the face will look squished and stuff. Right. So so you don't want to do that. What you want to do is treat the box as like a placement holder, like a, like a container. So you want to put the image in the container. So to do that, the image has to sit right on top of the box. Do you see the setup? Look, here's the image, right? Here's the box behind the image. Okay, first you set it up. That's why I always call click on the box and place the image automatically puts it on top. So what you do next is you hold, is you right click and you create a clipping mask. You should be familiar with this from Illustrator terminology because the clipping mask will do just that. It'll clip the image inside the rectangle. I'll demonstrate one more time. You ready? You can go right click, create clipping mask. You can also go to layer, create clipping mask. You can also press Command Option G. To create clipping mask. You know my favorite way to do it? Watch my favorite way. Watch this, everyone. I go right where they are. I hold Alt or Option on my keyboard and I click right between like that. And that'll just basically do this. Look, it'll just bring the image out like that. See? I'll just clip it. It'll clip the image nicely. I love that method. Say, let's do it again here. Click on this rectangle. Let's go place another image, place embedded. Let's go get the next image, which is pro probably this one here. This one's quite big, so that's fine. Just going to make it smaller. Fit it this way. Press enter and hold option and click between the layers. Next one over. File place embedded. Press enter, option, click between the two to clip the image inside. Next, look, I'm doing this again and again, right? Next one over, place embedded. There's the next image. Resize it, position it. You can do whatever you want in terms of the scalability. Press enter, an option, click to place it in the container. And you can still look, you can still move it around. It's it's still within the mask parameter. If you want to move the mask, you can move the mask. Want to move both, 
you select both of them and you can move the whole thing. Not that you want to do that, but just in case you want to nudge it or reposition it, you can. not OK, that's how you can basically create Photoshop as your placement holder method to image it inside this. Picture. Now, up until a few years ago, they came up with another method that mimics this one. And they say better. I you know what? I, I kind of grew to like it. It's OK. But this, for me, still holds a lot of good kind of capability to do just that. So now that we did that, right, let's learn with these new boxes. I'm going to teach you the new method. There's a new method. So this is still considered the old school, traditional container method. But I'm going to show you the new method right now. Okay, So you can stick with whatever method you like better. You don't have to mix it up like I am. I'm doing this for you know presentation purposes, but you can do whichever one you like. So if you like this, fine, but you might like the next one better. So let's go ahead and roll over this little clip. And yes, I'll make you watch a video now. It's worth like a 50 second video. You ready? You can handle that. <laughs> so basically this tool was one of the most newest addition to Photoshop um, 2000, I think 23 came out. So let's go ahead and play this video. Watch a quick video and take it away, Gregory. His name's not the Gregory. The frame tool allows you to create placeholder frames, which can later be filled with placed images. This convenient tool is perfect for planning compositions, organizing your design elements, or creating mockups. To access the frame tool, press K on your keyboard or find it in the toolbar. Click and drag to draw a frame on the canvas. You can add an image to the frame by dragging and dropping directly into the frame it will automatically scale to fit the frame's dimensions. Both the frame and the image inside can be selected, resized, or rotated together or separately. To select the frame or image independently, use the Move tool. Click to select the frame and double-click to select the image. To replace an image in a frame, simply drag and drop a new image on top of the frame. The new image will automatically scale to fit the frame, replacing the previous image. Is that good? You did a good job. Eh? I like that. I'm really pretty impressed with how they do quick show. A lot of these tools, they do like demonstrations on how they work, which is kind of nice. So the way they they did uh, bring it up as a tutorial based version of the software. But just to show you how it works on our level here, there's the box. So here's the thing. You can't reuse this box. You have to make a new one with this tool called a frame tool. So this is why I drew these parameters, these guides. So I'm just going to basically delete this and delete that in order for me to demonstrate this one, okay? So I deleted the boxes because I'm going to create the frame tool that you just saw that gentleman demonstrate, okay? So we're going to go here and use this thing called a frame tool. We're going to go right to the corner and draw a frame. I'm going to go across, um, you know what? I'm going to go eight columns there. But look what's happening. Accidentally covering images that are already kind of overlapping the area. So you got to be careful because if you felt if, if you stick with this method, it would work without the problem because I'm mixing styles. It's going to conflict with the other ones that I did. So that's OK to prevent that from not happening. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to going to um, lock the other layers or better yet. Tell you what, I'll do this in a separate folder. I'm going to take this body and just lock it so it doesn't interrupt the stuff I just did. So this is the header, this is the body, and maybe this will be another section here, okay? Just for demonstration, you with me? So I'm gonna make a new, um, click here, make a new folder, and I'll call this one the frame tool. Frame tool, because that's exactly what that's gonna do, and I'll move it right down here by itself. So now I have no problems. Back to the frame tool I go, let's draw a frame, and this time I like to go all the way across. Perhaps I'll go like maybe um, eight columns, so I'll do eight and four. That's a nice split. Eight and four. Okay. So look how that looks. There's a frame. There's a thumbnail. It's ready for me to bring a picture or image. For, for me to bring an image, I'm simply going to go to my uh, image sources and simply drag one of these nice little landscape pictures that I have. Maybe perhaps this one. Okay. Are you ready? Watch this. Drag and drop. OK, and basically this is the frame. This is the content. And yeah, you can basically. Um, it's 
Again, it's overlapping this one. I'll just hide it for now. So now you can do two things. You can click on this one, the image. You can press Command T. You can resize the image, or you can resize the frame. You can also resize both at the same time. So be careful what thumbnail you select. Better yet, select the whole thing by clicking on the whole thing on the right. So again, this is the frame, the container. This is the image. Whereas in comparison to the previous method, I used the clipping method. Do you understand? The top and bottom clipping method. This is the side-by-side -side frame tool method. So whatever method you like, use it. This is newer. I think this is easier. It's a drag and drop thing. You know, might as well go with it. I'm really not a fan of this texture, guys. I'm just going to get rid of it. Yeah, this texture is really just, just I don't know. It's, it's, I'm not going to sleep good tonight knowing that I did this texture. So I'm going I'm to unlock this here. Just delete the texture here. Just keep it nice and grayscale. Maybe we'll put another image or something there. Tell you what I'll do. I'll show you another little trick we can do with a nice masking technique. So I'll save that for after, okay? As a matter of fact, maybe I'll do it now. So I'm going to go back to the body um, you know, folder, right? I'm going to drop an image right there. I'll drop this one here with the clouds. Let's drop the clouds right there. In the background. Command T. Right. I'm going to flip it. So it's going to be edit transform. I'll do a nice little abstract design. I'm, I'm going to flip it vertical. So it looks like it's upside down, right? That's fine. I'm going to put it inside the body layer as well. In the very bottom of the body, right? And I'm going to give it a layer mask. So watch this carefully. Remember, I did this with the demonstration earlier. Layer, uh, layer mask. I could have done this also with the texture too. It would have worked better. Reveal all. Or just click on this little button down there that does a layer mask. This will create the thumbnail as well. It looks like the frame tool, but it's not. And there I'm going to use the gradients, which is basically hide the Im or fade the image out. So basically it's going to look like this. Fading the image, right? You don't have to do this, I'm just a little extra thing. We'll do it the other way. I'll do it this way, so the clouds go down. I don't know what I was thinking with the clouds not going up there, something like that. Again, this miscellaneous stuff, don't worry about it. Just the background texture design. Here I'll put a text box, okay? So here I'm gonna draw a text, the type tool. I'm gonna go inside the frame tool again, and I'm just gonna click and drag the mouse to create like a text box of text. And I'm gonna use my shortcuts, command shift, let, oh, let's just use the type tool. Go to the character palette under window, look for where it says a character, and here you can select a font. So we're gonna go with a nice 18 point, you know, website fonts. Maybe a little bigger just to see it better. Okay. I'm going to change the font to something very normal. Maybe like Arial or something, like a very popular web font. I'll turn off all the caps. I'll make it a little smaller. I'm going to do copy and paste. Okay. I'm going to do a paragraph left align because it makes sense. It's text, right? Why am I? I mean, align differently. And this could be like a body of text that I'm going to have. Perhaps I'm going to maybe just erase uh, this part here. And I'll show you later how you can incorporate this, um, this text layer to your assets. Could be a button, call to action, could be anything. And this will be like a header, maybe.
heading for column, sure. All right, so you get my idea, right? We're getting all these little details going. And now we have the, you know, the frame tool has these other elements. You have the header, you got some body text. This, you're gonna do it in HTML anyways, but it's good to set up the layout so you gotta show what the website might look like, if there's potential content area for that and other things, right? On the bottom, I'm gonna put like maybe copyright or something like that that goes in line with uh, some of the standards out there. Be careful not to click in the box because it's going to do just that. So rather than I'm going to click over here, I'll put copy, right? 2024, all rights reserved. Right, whatever copy this will be. And you can have site map, you can have social media icons, all these different things that you can put on the website to make it look more legitimized, right? And then again, it's just a matter of investing time and putting details in it, right? Uh, now the menu, of course, is something you can dress up over here. We're gonna click on the menu portion, okay, where the header is. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the header and just put like a, a text and you're going to do some CSS and HTML anyways, but I'm just going to put some text here and just type things like home, I'm going to double click so I can see it. Products. Uh, then we'll have services, members, contacts, frequently asked questions, whatever, right? Um, buy, okay, whatever the website needs to have. So this will be like the menu on top of the actual design. And again, you can kind of uh, focus this based on what the website does pertain. And eventually, you'll have like a you know website mock-up design that fits the requirement standards of you know what you're doing today with your other classes, learning your HTML and CSS. Because uh, what I'm going to do uh, after we finish the design, the next lesson next week, we'll be teaching you how to export assets for the web. So next week we're going to take this. I'm not going to do this again. We'll use the same design and we're going to break up all these images and um, kind of compartmentize them into a folder and use that folder for your website. So you can build a real website because when you look at this, you have a blueprint now. You're like, OK, I'm going to put a section at the top. I'm going to put a menu. I need four columns. I got the images ready. I'll just dump them in when the CSS HTML is done. Then I'll do another section down there. I got image and text. You already have a plan. You're not going to just wing it and start guessing what you're doing, right? So this is why this is important, right? What you have the design ready. And that's why I said next week's important. It's a follow-up from today's class on exporting the assets and even slicing the website. I'll show you two methods that are proven to work. One is an older method that's still used today. But one is the more modern, up-to-date method that you're going to do for your next project for this class, which is uh, the last thing that we have left. Okay, so I'll show you. You have one more assignment, but that's due later. The animation. So you have two items due for me left. A website. You're gonna make a website like this for me. Okay. If it helps you with your existing project that you're doing with the other class, even better. You can do the design here and execute the real website there. Are you guys doing a website? What kind of website are you making? Right. 
React website, okay. But what theme though and stuff? Any theme you want? Okay. So pick a theme. Maybe you can maybe you can lay it out here, and then use it later in React. Okay. I'm not too familiar with React, so I don't know. You guys like React? Is it good? Well, why do they use React then? Is it a popular thing or? I, I've heard of it. That's why it that kind of sounds familiar, but I'll use it. <laughs> Refresh. Right. So basically, um, so I'm going to pause it here for now. I'm going to save this file. So do a file save. Okay. Okay. So this is basically uh, the next thing that we're going to do going forward. Once now we know how to start a website. So I would suggest you start this uh, build right now. Uh, next week, we'll also do multiple pages. I'll show you how to do multiple pages as well to convert to an artboard. But that's pretty much what Photoshop does, right? Like, look, folders, okay? So you have the header. Um, you have, um, you know, you have the body, right? And you have the frame tool, which I label. It could be like another section of my website that I have. This is the footer with all the site maps and all the stuff that's there. I have a background layer that's colors or images, whatever you want. And like I said, next week we're going to create a website out of this. Like I'm, I'm actually going to make. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you how to make a, like a mock-up website in HTML from Photoshop. The only thing it can't do is make it responsive, but it'll serve it up on the web as a website on a browser, so that'll work fine. Okay, so that's going to be next week. All right, so now let's go over the project because I wanted to cover that as well. So this is your um, look, all the stuff that we did today. We're going to um, continue with next week with uh, with the image asset generation. So we're going to go on over. We're going to cover this link next week because I want to integrate it with this class here, class 12. Okay, and then we're going to talk about some little bit of more tricks on restoration and stuff and website to mobile conversion and so on and so forth. OK, now let's talk about the project because this is the big one. So it's under your um, main projects right here. So the main project for Illustrator was the splash banner. Remember that one, the nice splash banner you guys did? So for, for Photoshop, the best way to put the production techniques in play is to create a web page design prototype. OK, so if you look at the details of that one, this is what it is. OK. So you're going to create a one page responsive scrolling website of your choice in Photoshop and follow the criteria below. Why one page? Because it's like a template. Then you can replicate more pages and I'll show you how to do that. Right. But the one page was I'm looking for the nice masterful one page template design that people sell online. You can buy templates now. You know that 70, 80 bucks. You can buy a, a Photoshop template and use it for a website. There's a big, uh, you know, here, watch, I'll show you just some places I have them. Photo, shop, web, templates, okay? Watch this, okay? Uh, Envato.com. So look, these are all Photoshop templates, right? Let's say I want to buy this Photoshop template right here, right? Well, this has a lot more than just one, I guess. So you can look, there's a template I can get. Okay. Subscribe and download. So if you pay 16 bucks a month, they're going to give you all these templates. So everybody likes to make money by memberships and stuff. That's how they work. Okay. And vital elements. So I'm just showing you this uh, thing here. But you can make your own. You don't have to pay 16 bucks, right? <laughs> Create your own Photoshop. So desktop size templates look i did large 19 20 1080p exactly what we did today okay and or regular format you can go if you want to go smaller starting size mobile conversion that's something we'll cover next week as well how to convert the website from a desktop to a mobile so you have both dimensions done layer masks i want to see a little bit of a technical implementation on your work so show me that you can do some layer masks on your file uh, selection methods, that means like transparencies, quick masking, if you have a need to that, I like to see it in there as well. 
This is important right here. Generation of image assets, of assets to be used in HTML. Next week, we'll cover that also. How to create image, image assets, because then you can plug that into your HTML website. So it makes a nice one-two combo, okay? Layer styles, stuff we did with the planet and stuff. If it helps you integrate some titles and stuff, some effects. A complete mock-up showing the nav bar along with additional assets. So make, make sure it looks like a website. The menu's there. Like it, if I look at it, I'll think it's a website kind of. And we just won't, don't make it look like this because to be honest with you, what we did in Photoshop, this is not a, a complete looking version. It's like half done, not even half, right? It doesn't have a, a proper menu. It's missing stuff. They make it look real, okay? So dress it up nice. Basically, that's what I'm saying. And for me to spend another hour, I'm sure I can do a good job and make it look somewhat realistic too. Okay, so a Photoshop format is what you're going to hand in, a PSD format, okay? Uh, along with image assets, okay? Which are zipped. This is due on the last week of class. So I'm gonna give you as much time as I can. And the, when, when's the last day of class? Thursday, April 18th. It's my brother's birthday. He won't be here, I'll be in Europe. We'll call my birthday. Good luck and have fun. So, you know, this is pretty much what it, this is like an, an example of what I did today, like a little template thing. Nothing different than what I showed you. Something I used before, okay. Uh, so you can either do, you know, an example of that. I'll show you some other student examples, if you like, what students did in the past. That'll be maybe a good reference. We'll start with that next week. Maybe I'll show you some examples. We'll talk about some ideas and stuff, right? And then we'll dive into the, um, you know, the instructions and the lesson and so on and so forth. And you'll get one more assignment. This one you can do in class. It's like a motion design. We're going to do an animation class two weeks from now. So I'm going to teach you how to do a web GIF animation in Photoshop. It'll be fun because then you can put that in your web production website too. You can have like an animated GIF. It could be something subtle, like something moving like in the background or something like, like an ad. You can do like a YouTube ad. You can convert that into a commercial. So it's a motion design thing. So, so you can do a lot of fun stuff with that too. So that's, that's like an assignment that's going to be due also later at the end, but I'm going to, Talk about that two weeks from now. Right now, I want you to get started on the website so you get that up and running because that's like the main project. And you already handed in your Facebook ad last week. That's great. Some of you asked me for an extension. I said, sure, give it to me, well, you know, the day of or whatever. That's fine. If you had some problems, I know I wasn't here, so I couldn't help you. So I gave you the benefit of the doubt. Okay. If you haven't already submitted it, make sure you do. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Questions? All right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, for Photoshop? So I'll tell you what, if you didn't do it, I'll let it go this time, but I wanted to make sure you know how to do that. To do that is quite easy. Uh, you go, let's say I want this, this, this is an ad, right? A JPG. Um, it's the same thing though. I know. So here's the thing. These are four letter prefix, JPEG, and JPG is a, a PC. PCs only use three letter extensions. Mac uses four letter extensions. Even back then, this is TIFF, T I F F. There was four letter extensions on Mac files, like the Linux, or not Linux, the OS files, right, for Mac. Windows, two or three. Mac, four. Now it's all kind of in the middle, they're all mixed up. So that's why that might, yeah, yeah, yeah. So JPG is the JPEG, okay? But but it's under, just so you know, it because it, it's not, if it's not under save as, save a copy, look at this, right? You got to look for it. It's right here, JPEG. That's the JPEG, the JPG. And it'll give you, look, when you save that, at the very end, it'll give you a JPG extension. Right to the end here, right? Any other questions? Okay, so I'm gonna stop the recording. That's a wrap. Thank you for joining me. Hope you guys are enjoying the rest of your semester.
let me know if um if you guys need any help with anything and uh, i'll see you guys in the next video over and out We just stop the recording and I'll be right with you. Oh, what? Oh, I did. I'll show it to you. <laughs> I think froze my Zoom. Hope, hope it recorded. Oh, there we go. It's working now. <laughs> All right. I think we're good. Uh, so I'll check the video again. I'll upload it. I'll stop recording and I'll get to you guys in a second. Thank you.